So for today's session, uh, version 11 explains, okay, uh, if we cannot answer the questions in the time permitted, you can always email me with the questions after the session ends. And that uh, is lclausnetthemasync.com. Now today's material <clears throat> is selected pieces of our performance tuning classes. So you may want to take note of those if you need more in-depth help with the explains um, for tuning. You can always take a look at DB1032 and at the database DBA level, <clears throat> you can always take a look at DB3052. Now, today we're going to take a look at the five key explain tables that really are the key for you looking at your access path interpretation. What access path is DB2 doing? Now, normally I use those five tables that I'm going to take a look at when I'm doing my rebind explains, my bind and rebind explains. Okay? And uh, I analyze those tables. Occasionally, if I have a critical access path that I need to go into more depth in analysis, really get down and dirty, then I will re-explain using the fully expanded 20 explain tables. But 99% of the time I get everything I need out of the five key tables. So I don't create all 20 tables for everything. I have my production five tables that I use in my binds and my rebinds. Or if I need to explain an ad hoc query. Then I have one set of expanded that I will do selective explains to. Now, <clears throat> you also need to not only bind your programs, but you need to take for your ad hoc environments. And periodically, you should be explaining your statement cache. And we'll take a look at that today. <clears throat> we need to be able to analyze our key tables for the access path problems. <clears throat> whether this is an explain of statement cache or whether it's an explain of an application or an ad hoc query. And we're going to take careful look at the version 11 new stats feedback tables so that we can use that feedback that the explain gives us to make sure we're running run stats to gather the appropriate statistics for DB2 to use <coughs> in access path selection. Now taking a look at the list of the tables. Now there are, there are now in version 11, 11 or 20 explained tables. Now you'll notice I've highlighted the first five tables here. The plan table, which is our traditional explain table, it's been around since the beginning, will give us our ba basic access path information. So we need our plan table. In addition, we should be get capturing the information about the CPU cost. So we can analyze the cost CPU milliseconds, CPU service units in the statement table. Then, to be able to look at that access path and look at the predicates to see if the predicates are coded appropriately, whether the predicate has been rewritten by DB2 under query rewrite, because version 11 does a lot more query rewrite than version 10 did. Okay? And to find out the filter factor for those predicates, whether they're a good filtering predicate, and whether they're indexable, stage one or stage two, 
we want to get the predicate and the filter table, the information out of those two. Now, if I have those four tables, I can know what where clause, search criteria, the application or the SQL coded, the predicates, what the estimated CPU cost is for the access path chosen, and what access path, whether it's indexable, index access, table space scan, if there's any sorts in the plan table, those four tables give me a good idea of what they coded and what access path they're getting and the cost. In addition, in version 11, version 11 added to our explain output the stats feedback. This table will tell me if there are missing statistics out there and if DB2 is recommending me to gather additional statistics so that it can make a better choice of access paths for the predicates that were coded in that statement. So <clears throat> the new DSN statement table, those are my five criticals. Now DB2 version 11 also added two additional tables. It added a predicate selectivity table that is in, used as input to the bind query. If you want to tweak the selectivity of a predicate, and it also added for the virtual indexes, when you're creating these virtual indexes to see if they are going to be of use, the key target information which gives detail in case that virtual index is an index on expression or an XML index that you're creating for testing to see if an index will help. <clears throat> so we have three additional tables added in version 11. The select selectivity, the expansion of the virtual index information, and the most critical is our stat feedback. These are the statistics I need. Okay. So we have our 20 explained tables and of course the three tables used if you're going to do bind query to make your dynamic more static. Okay. Now version 11 also expanded your explained tables. Now please note, if you create your version 11 explained tables from the install, um, and the, all the tables except the query table, user query table, you can find in your SAMPLIBE in the member DSNTESC, you will notice that the version 11 explain tables <clears throat> now are created as one table per universal partition by growth table space. <clears throat> so, the explain tables are now in universal table spaces. Now you want to look at that. Now the table space skeleton out there for the create is partitioned by growth uh, with a data set size of 4 gig and 256 max partitions. Now I tailored that down because I'm not going to keep that much information and I made mine just one gig for my test environment, my sandbox, and my test environments, and cut down the max partitions to just one, one, and left them partitioned by growth. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at changing that max partitions to two. Okay. But they've changed, IBM's changed the version 11 to use partition by growth table spaces. Now, they also supplied a stored procedure, admin explain, maint, that will take your existing, create the new, and migrate them into version 11 table spaces. Okay? Into the version 11 format. 
Now, there are new columns added to the explain tables. Every release, they add new columns. Uh, the two most common columns added to the majority of the tables, plan table and a few others, is a scan direction. Whether when we're doing our index scan, whether doing forward or reverse scan. So we, we know we don't have to estimate for our order by ascending, descending, that type of thing, whether DB2 is going to go forward or backward in the index. And they also added a column. If DB2 has to expand the query for, in other words, also access the history table for system period temporal tables, add that union, or for the version 11, a archive enabled, if it has to go get the archived rows as well as the base rows for an archive enabled, it will tell you in the expansion reason the reason for expanding that query, adding the union or adding the additional rows for a business period, okay? So you have the column as to the reason. Is it archive enabled, business period, sensitive, okay? System time sensitive. In the virtual indexes, it also added a, a series of columns to further define uh, the virtual index. Uh, the unique count, if you've got a multi-column index and some of those columns uh, for the virtual index are include columns, not included in the uniqueness requirement for a virtual unique index. Uh, the target account, uh, count, uh, the index extension type, whether it's um, uh, scalar, have an S in the extension type, index extension, it'll have an S if it's um, uh, index on a scalar function, it'll have S, I mean, it'll have X in there if it's an XML. Okay, so it tells you the type of extension. If it is extended, then down here in the sparse column, whether it may or may not include all the columns, because this, this index might be unique where not null, in which case it'll be X in the sparse, it's a sparse index, and otherwise there's not an entry for every data row. Okay, and then the data repeat factor. It's the estimated number of pages that are expected to be touched when an index order is followed, okay? So, giving DB2 all the information on that virtual index that it needs for access path optimization. Okay. Now, new explain tables. Here's the three new explain tables. Stats feedback. All right. This gives you your recommendation for missing statistics or conflicting statistics both of which are a problem for the access path optimizer. The predicate selectivity used for input for the bind query when you want to do some selectivity overrides for certain, uh, certain columns in the table. And then the extended virtual index key targets, which gives you the information about your expression-based XML. So we have those, three extra tables. Now, production explains. Why do we explain? 
we explain <clears throat> to analyze our SQL statement performance. What do we explain? Well, we should be using explain when we bind, um, bind our packages, bind and rebind. We should be using explain yes. Now, if you've missed an explain yes, you can always do the rebind explain only if you have to. On the other hand, you may not want to do rebind explain only. You may want to grant somebody only the explain authority and not rebind. In which case you can use the explain package statement. I can go out there <clears throat> and issue an explain package, give the fully qualified package name, and all DB2 does is go to Sys Packages, goes to the DB2 directory, to the package stored in the directory, and explains that saved package. So I know that in my explain tables, this is the access path of the stored package that is being loaded in and executed. Okay, um, Philip, did you have your hand raised for a reason? So we can explain an already existing package. Now it does have to exist. Um, John, are you out there? For some reason, I can't get to the unanswered questions area. Where'd it go? Ah, there they are. Oh, no, I guess I don't have any uh, uh, questions that are unanswered. Okay. I found it on the dashboard. Sorry about that. All right. So, we need to have and explain of the packages that are in our environment. So preferably we bind or rebind with explain yes. And if we don't have the most current one out there, if we don't have the explain table in it, we can use the explain package statement so that we know that the package that's stored in the directory is the one. And, and that was a great saving grace because a lot of times I don't have the current <clears throat> package in the plan table in the explain tables for me to look at. I will use explain package if the five tables don't give me enough information and I need extended information about my package that's being run. In which case, I will use explain package SQL statement. I can use uh, Spoofy or TEP2 to do that. No problem. Yes, explain package did come out in version 10. Even with the explain package, this is the most current, this is what's out there in the directory, okay? If you use reopt vars, reoptimization at execution time on that bound package, the access path used may not be what's stored in the DB2 directory. And that's where I need to take a look at my statement cache look at my traces and see if there is a cached out there and pull it in by its statement ID. So 
a little caveat when we're using that reopt because we get those mini rebinds for static SQL that's no longer static. Now, so we need to control our packages. Now, we should have a copy of the access path for whatever our plan management is. So if we're using extended, we should have the current, the previous, and the original in our standard explain tables. Okay. And we'll look at our bind. If you need to take an individual SQL statement and bind it, you can always use the explain plan. And you can do that for any executable SQL statement. Just copy and paste it in and explain it. Statement cache. Now, periodically, if you're an, uh, an ad hoc environment, I have a separate explain table just for my explain statement cache all. Because the only thing it's going to populate is my statement cache table. And I don't want to mix that in with everything else and have to manage that all by itself. Then I'll look at those statements and narrow it down to the individual dynamic prepared statements and then do a normal explain of an individual statement by its statement ID. And I'll show you an example of that. So that I can find out what it was. Now remember, it could change your dynamic. And you can get a little bit of the information from your uh, statement casual of how many copies of it out there, how many used it, et cetera. Or you can do an explain statement, statement ID, and I use my standard explain tables to find that, but just a different schema name version of them when I look at an individual. That statement ID may also come from your traces, your performance traces. So when you're going through in performance and if you've got the monitors on, you, you can see the statement ID and you can go ahead and explain individual IDs that have high cost. And I'll take a look at some of the things that you may want to think about there. Current explain mode spatial register. If you have dynamic prepared applications out there for a dynamic prepared statement and you want those explained, you can set your current explain mode spatial register value to yes for normal explain, or you could do it explain mode for just explain. Now, this can be embedded in the dynamic program, but if you don't want them to change it, you can also use a profile for individuals to set this mode to yes and then turn it off. Now, explaining every dynamic statement in your prepared dynamic SQL modules out there is a lot of overhead, okay? So using statement cache for the majority, but there might be certain user IDs or auth IDs that you want to tailor and say, hey, during this time period, I want to turn on, I want to use a profile to set the current explain mode special register to yes, and then I can deact and turn it off. All right, now a quick review here. A lot of people say they, they don't like the existing explain tables, uh, but it is important um, to notice that Data Studio does give us information that we can still get 
of the explained tables. So you can see the text of your process and your access paths just as easily from the explain tables versus the Data Studio Visual Explain. You want to look at the text. We have a column out there, added predicate, in the predicate table um, to tell us if transitive closure or your specifications and your query block will tell you if DB2 did a query rewrite, changed que subqueries to joins or are correlated and non-correlated to each other. And don't forget in version 11 they also added the expanded columns to let you know if uh, they expanded it, the expansion was due to your archive enabled, version archive enabled, or other processes. You can also use it for predicate analysis, just as easy as you can Data Studio, and cost analysis. Okay, now explains. A version 11 has added some newer options for us. for our binds and rebinds. Now, of course, our standard preference is explain yes, extended plan management. Now, what about reusing an existing access path? Do we always want to reuse the existing access path? <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> the only choice we had in the previous release was none, no, or error. We can use the warning now. If I cannot reuse the existing access path when I rebind, and this is part of migration 10 to 11, if I can't reuse it, I prefer, but I can't reuse it, and DB2 has to come up with a brand new access path, I want them to give me a warning. Instead of having it fail, I want a warning so that I can find out which ones changed. Then I can analyze those changed ones in my explain table. The reason will be in the plan table remarks column of why it couldn't. App compare. You can also use the compare. App compare will tell me whether the new access path is different to the older access path. And I can get a warning. And I'll get warning messages and I can go out and analyze what is different with those processes. And again, look at the plan table remarks column because it puts some of the information, the reason code and so on in there for you, as well as in your output process. So I can take a look at that. All right. Um, Apple compatibility. Now in version 11, we need to be very cognizant of our Apple compatibility. Are we binding under version 10 rules or are we binding and creating access paths for version 11 new function mode? And don't do version 11 until you are actually in version 11 new function mode. And don't forget, in the explains, if you re-optimize, the access path may not be what was in the bind package. Okay. So take a look at these. Make your choices, especially when you're going 10 to 11. And please make sure you have the explain tables available and you analyze the columns associated with that. All right, now when you do explain package and want to find out what's in the directory, 
you can do the collection package, but if you don't, if you are using extended, you're not, you need to tell it which copy. Otherwise, it's going to put in your plan table an entry for each, the current, the previous, and the original package. So if you really want to rebind your package to see what's currently there, use copy current. Okay? The hint used will be 0, 1, or 2 as well, the hint used column, as to which one you're getting. Now, surprisingly enough, in version 10, they gave us two of the DB2 directory tables. In the DB2 directory, we could select against. We could select against log range, and we could select against um, utility, sysutil. They've opened it up. All of the DB2 directory tables are now available. So you can actually go out and select against the uh, directory catalog table, the against the select the against the uh, skeleton package table. Okay? And it can get, you can go out there, I just wanted the collection, give it a collection ID, and it'll give me my packages and my consistency token and the version so I know what's bound out there and which ones are out there. Now there's also two blobs, binary large object columns out there associated with your package table. One is the data of the package. The other one is all the explain that occurred at the bind of that package. And that is what is used when you do an explain package is the contents of the, the explained binary large object column. Okay. For statement cache, it's a good idea to set up a table just for the statement cache table when you want to do cache all. And then turn around and explain the individual subsystem IDs, the IDs that you want. Now you can get that from the cache table that you did and explain all to by doing some analysis, or your if kids, 0316, 0124, um, some of your diagnostic trace records, such as zero, that's your, those were your monitor facilities, uh, 0173, 196, and 337. We'll give you statement IDs, and then do your statement, Cash explains. And you will get the full information. To get your detail, um, I usually then have a criteria on, after my explain all to go out and look at which ones have the highest elapsed times and then turn around and individually explain that statement so I can get my detail and also so I can get my recommendations for my run stats. Your explain mode spatial register, you can set that mode to yes before a dynamic SQL statement, so you can embed that. Now, be careful because the SQL ID is where the explain table schema is gotten from, where the table qualifiers for the embedded SQL is through the schema. So make sure you do set your appropriate qualifiers when you're working with this, okay? Now you can also use a profile to set the current explain mode. Now I would narrow that down if I'm going to do that to have explains occur online, you know, why my dynamic SQL ad hoc processes are going down, I would narrow that, that down either to a specific auth ID or a client user ID, or a specific client application, or a product ID, if those is what I need to do. And I can turn that on and activate it, and I can deactivate it. So I can capture explains of that dynamic processing. Okay. But in version 11, the real key is, is getting good direction as to what's missing 
for my access path, what statistics are missing or in conflict for my access paths. So that DSN statement feedback table is the one I've really honed into here in version 11. Now, uh, this is my query. The key columns in here is finding out whether it's table statistics that are missing, index statistics that are missing, or if they're column level type statistics, distribution statistics that are needed. And it will tell me the type of statistic that is needed, the reason it's recommending that statistic, okay? If it's more than one column, the number of columns, and the recommended group of columns if these are correlated column statistics that it needs for your distribution stats. Now, for example, I might do an explain of a query like this, or this could be a query that is explained, and DB2 comes back and it makes a recommendation. Well, the explain recommendation from the statement feedback says that the job column in the employee table in this table space of this database is missing cardinality, basic cardinality statistics. So the cardinality statistics were missed. It may not have been a column ever used in a where clause before. And it's recommending frequently frequency statistics because of it's a nullable column. Any column in your table that is nullable, you should gather frequency stats. Now, um, query tuner recommendation using Data Studio Query Tuner recommends you get the column job. Well, that takes care of the basic, but it didn't take care of the frequency statistics. So when I updated my run stats, I included the column job and I asked DB2 to get me the frequency values, one most and one least, okay, one both. I want to know if the null value is the least frequent value in that column or the most. And DB2 can use that in access path selection if I'm doing if null, where null or if it is the most frequent for values compared to in the job column. So on your individual explains, make sure you get that information. Now that feedback table, it can give you cardinality recommendations, frequency statistic recommendation, histogram, for your range predicates, index statistics, table statistics, okay? And the reason it is making these recommendations could be because missing stats. Got a negative one, and I cannot get a good explain. Missing key card now, if you see key card, there's an index out there that run stats didn't gather. It could be a column that has a low cardinality, very few values in a, a lot of rows, or it's nullable or it's default. All three of those, you should be gathering frequency stats on those types of columns. If you've got ranged predicates, betweens, likes, those types of things, it may recommend histogram stats. So you can gather blocks of for those columns. So when do I need histogram? For range predicates and possibly parallelism. You may see a conflict and I see a lot of this and that's not good. Good standards say I shouldn't have run run stats at various different time periods with different options so my statistics don't match up. I really do need to get clean statistics. So I want to be able to run run stats. Now, with version 11, I can reset stats. I can use the reset option. 
it'll wipe out the statistics there, and then I can run run stats with all the options I need, and everything is back in sync. And for complex multi-column, it will give me compound predicates of multiple columns. It'll give me the number of columns and what columns in the table I should gather that information. So when we look at, here's missing statistics. Hey, somebody didn't run run stats on these objects. If those are the types of reasons you're saying, and you're going to see index and table. You may see things like, and down here, look at the project table. The project table has conflicting statistics. So with statistics will run piecemeal, and the table statistics don't match the distribution statistics, which don't match because they don't add up. They were gathered at a different time period. So I need to reset those and get my appropriate statistics in one run stats. Whoops. Okay. Now, we not only have statistics for explaining an individual statement, but we have a new catalog table that gathers statistic recommendations for all the tables in the environment. Now, there is a system parameter, ZParm out there, that controls what you gather. So there is a stat feedback scope, ZParm, that will tell DB2 whether it's to gather none, which I don't like, static SQL only, dynamic SQL only recommended statistics, or all. Now, if you want to keep it minimal and you're always doing your binds with explains, you could say just for the dynamic, I want to collect system level statistics recommendation by each table accessed. Or I could say all, both for static and dynamic. I turn mine on to all. This is populated the same time as your real-time stats are. So the time element, whatever you set for real-time stats, externalization, is when these recommendations are externalized. Okay? For individual tables, in the SysIBM Sys tables, Catalog table for your individual table. If there's individual tables, you do not want the overhead of collecting run stats recommendations. There's a column out there called stats feedback, and you can set that to no, to disable it. You can turn it back on with a yes. The default is yes. Gather it for every table out there. When you run run stats, it will remove the stats feedback information if you gather the statistics that are recommended at the system level. Okay? So we might see range predicate recommendations. We might see complex predicates, the first column of the table, the fifth column of the table, range histogram statistic recommendation. We really need to listen to DB2 when it comes to generate run stats for proper access path selection. So we can take a look. For example, uh, Ed Level says, you have a nullable column here. Okay, I need statistics. So I'm going to add to my run stats a column group on ed level, freak value. For nullable, I just want one value. I want one both. In other words, I want the least and the most occurring value in the column. I don't need the default 10 
values. Another example, I come up with the employee number. Employee number says you've got a range of predicates going out here, you should gather histogram. It also says you're using employee number in a compound predicate. And, I, and the compound predicate is a combination of column one and column five out of my table. So I go to sys columns for that table, find out first column, fifth column. I set up a column group for those two columns so I can get the cardinality. And I add to the index on my employee number. Now, it didn't tell me index. It just told me column. But that is the first column of this index. I know my data. I put my histogram in there. Num calls, one. Num quantiles, I chose 20. So I gather my histogram stats. All right, freak values. Now the default on an index is uh, frequency 10 most. Personally, I like to get both. Now it might be five least and the five most. So everything in between if I have a skew, the low and high end. So getting the frequency values appropriately. Default statistics are not pretty. Okay. Another lovely change, I can reset my access path. So we have the new reset. So I can run run stats on my table, say, and reset all access path statistics, clean it out because I've got conflicts and I'm going to run a run stats that includes all the statistics I really need. It will reset your normal statistic table statistics back to negative one or the default value. And it deletes the rows from the distribution statistics catalog tables. So I've cleaned it up. Please make sure right after you do this, you run your full-blown run stats with all your recommended statistics in it to gather all the statistics you need. Very important. Okay. So set up appropriate run stats. Grab, gather your appropriate distribution. If you keep history, that's good. Clean out history and please use, uh, if you can, use profiles. <clears throat> run stats profiles were introduced in version 10. Um, and you can set your profile from your run stats, set them from the existing statistics you've gathered. You can set up new runs options and update the profile, delete it. But it is a good idea to use the run stats profile. And I've got some examples. So I could set up run stats. Um, index, uh, table all, I see too many people use table all. It's a waste. If those columns are new, not used in a where clause for search criteria, why gather the cardinality statistics? So the default, if you say table all, index all, is all columns, way overhead. My run sets runs too long. And it, for all the indexes, it will set up a column group for any uh, columns in the index first, first and second, first, second, and third, and do a frequency count of 10, most. That's usually not what I want, but I can use that. I, uh, my default minimum is index all without table all, because it will get mine. Then I can set a profile to see what it gives me, and go out and look at my tables profiles, and I'm going to see that the default goes out there and generates a column level cardinality statistics for the first column of every index. Not all. 
and then it will get the key cardinality for each of the the first the column of each of the indexes, the first and second column of the indexes, and the first, second, and third, and gather the 10 most frequent values, which nine times out of 10 are not ha really that usable, and there are exceptions. Now, when I looked at my history table for my temporal, and I have my index on my temporal table, and this is my index, these are my indexes. When I did the run stats there before I had very much history populated, it did not use the normal default. So there's exceptions to the rules. Okay. And personally, I like, you know, to get both, least and most. That helps with the scans, page range, eligibility, and indexed and fluency. This is what it generated for my temporal or my uh, system period history table. Okay. Um, clean out statistics, keep them cleaned up. So in production, you'll probably want to keep multiple explain table versions, a schema name uh, for your five, a schema name with all the tables, and the schema name for a single statement cache. Do your normal explains into your five. If you need to do in-depth, get that statement feedback and also get the additional information of the new tables, then you can change the schema for your bind. Set your SQL ID if you're going to do an explain package. Okay, Get the expanded information or dynamic. Change the SQL ID to match that for expanded analysis. Okay. So explain, implement plan management, retain your explains for the all, make sure you're using at the new feedback tables and correlate that to your run stats. Otherwise you, you can't get a good um, set of access paths. DB2 version 11 is getting more and more cognizant of your access paths and your statistics that you're gathering. All right. Any questions? I know I did a little bit of a review there, but sometimes you've got to bring things up to level before you can go into the new stuff. These new explain tables in version 11, and please realizing the statistics, the conflicting, and so on, and being able to control that much easier, using the reset to clear out bad statistics, conflicting statistics, get them refreshed, okay? Okay, so I do have some questions. Yes. Thank you, Eric. And like I said, Peter, yes, explain package came out in version 10. However, um, I think it was pretty well missed along the way. Not very many people were even aware of it. If you go to thingmissing.com and go to the webinar page, you'll find the slides. And the replay will be out there after I finish the session today. We get it converted and get it loaded out there. It should be out there by the end of the week. Okay. And I do think, yeah. So if you go to the home page and then go to webinars, you're going to see all the webinars we have presented uh, through the last year out there. So you can get little pieces of webinars.
Any other questions? Where'd my questions go? Come on. There we go. Yeah. You're welcome. Good, Deb. Any other questions? If the conflict is reported. All right. It will ignore the older ones and take the newer ones in a conflict, David. So whichever one it has a stance time most frequent for, it's going to use that to extrapolate. You're welcome. Um, okay, the question was, does reset also delete the history tables? Um, it doesn't delete the rows from the history tables. Modify statistics does that. However, on the reset, there's also a history access path that resets those things about the access path in the history tables, too. So it does a partial, but it's not a full-blown clean-out of history. Does that make sense? There's an extra option you have to set, turn on with the reset. It's uh, extra syntax option to get the history access path information. And remember, when you say reset access path, that doesn't get rid of all the statistics run stats gathers. Only the columns used in access path selection in the catalog. So your partition level statistics that are not used by the access path optimizer, those are not cleared. which I find strange that they did it that way. But it's only the access path statistics columns in your catalog that are reset when you do your reset. And when you go out to the part level, it's gathered by run stats, but not used in access path selection, those statistics are still there. So when I first started using it, it was kind of, wow. All right. Anything else? Well, I definitely went over the 45 minutes. Sorry about that. All right, if we have no uh, other questions, I think that we're good for the day. And I want to thank all of you. And again, thank you very much. And we'll be having more and more presentations as the year goes on.